Good afternoon, happy Sabbath, and welcome to AY Snap. I'm Pastor Jason North, aka Boss Man, and today is a little bit different. Now, AY Snap is still gonna be a snap, but at the end of AY Snap, there'll be a special Black History presentation put together by our young people of Oakwood Adventist Academy. Listen, you are in for a treat. So remember to stay tuned as soon as AY Snap ends. All right? Hey, let's begin. Welcome to AY Snap. Man, it's in a snap. Have fun in the snap with AY Snap. Welcome to AY Snap. Snap, 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 snap. Featuring Boss Man and Kaboom. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is another edition of AY. Snap. And as you can see, uh, I'm in a different location today, but it's still all good. Yes, sir. And this is, what episode, Kaboom? What episode this, is this? This is episode number nine. Episode, listen, we've been doing this for nine straight weeks, y'all. Nine yes. straight weeks weeks and uh we're still having a great time with it remember listen as we are uh, as you're watching the video you can put your comments in the chat section and uh if you come up with some creative stuff of how these videos or the video is can be applicable either spiritually or just practically um so listen uh kaboom man listen let's roll into the clip of the week all right here we go here we go <laughs> oh wow. no, no, no. Kaboom, man, what can we learn from this? What practical application can we get from this particular uh, video we see here? All right, so when watching the clip, like you heard like the laughter, as soon as it started bubbling, like you heard the laughter, and I don't know if that was his sister, his mother, or whoever that was that was filming. I feel like the kid was set up. Okay. Like, I feel like <laughs> yeah, he didn't know. It was kind of like cuz my thing is like he didn't have just one mentos. He didn't have two mentos. He had like 20 mentos in his hand that he was trying to pour into yeah. the water. And I feel like whoever that was like set him up like, "Yo, we're going to try an experiment. We're going to mm. try something like, yo, grab a bunch of mentos and pour them into a bottle and let's see what happens." And you saw the kid was like looking into it, trying to see what development was gonna come, and then got blasted in his face. <laughs> and so right. I feel like they were like, "This is a." It was a setup because they were already busting mm. out laughing, and the kid was like, ah, ha, ha, trying to laugh, but it was kind of like a laugh of like, "Yeah, I just got embarrassed, but let me laugh this off. Let me, Ooh, let me okay. push it to the side. Like it, it really didn't bother me that much." Right. So, so what I think you can learn from you don't always have to volunteer. Mm. Be the example mm. of what people want in theory or what people want to test. Okay. There's All no right. Need to volunteer. Like sometimes you can learn. Like, oh, that might be a good idea. Why don't we like see if somebody else tried it and watch the video? Like, don't always be like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Teach. I'll, I'll do it, mom. I'll do it, sis. Mm. You don't always need to be the example. No doubt, no doubt. Don't be nobody's test dummy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Gotcha, exactly. gotcha, gotcha. All right, man, let's roll it one more time, man. Let's see what okay. we get the spiritual application. All right, here we go. All yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 was laughing it, but he wasn't, you know, he yeah. wasn't too thrilled about being sprayed. I don't know what nah. kind of uh that was that off-brand soda anyhow, too. Yeah. So he he yeah. didn't even get the real stuff. He got that, exactly. that off-brand. Uh, but listen, what can we learn spiritually for that? I think yeah. number one, man, I'm thinking that uh you know, the Bible talks about not being swift to, to go to, into mischief. And the devil is always trying to set us up to look yeah. stupid, to look foolish. And uh, and and the, whoever whoever set this kid up, they knew what was going to happen. They were they busted out laughing as soon as that stuff started shooting up. And so, listen, 
you got to be cautious about uh, what people ask you to do or what people ask you to involve with because the devil, is, listen, it's always trying to make you look foolish, make you look stupid or put you out there. And uh, that's what the devil does, y'all. So listen, be careful when people come at you with different ideas and stuff like that. Um, man, think through that stuff before you go ahead and get yourself messed up. Um, because the devil is trying to play you straight up. He is definitely trying to play you.
The first time that I experienced racism. The first time I encountered racism. The first time that I encountered racism. So, the very first racist encounter that I had was last year around December. I went to the mall and I walked into a store and was just looking around with one of my friends. So, we were looking and a worker walked up to us and said, um, are you guys okay? Do you need any help? We were like, yeah, we're fine. So, after that, this older white lady, she walked up to us right when the worker was going to walk into us and she was like are you stealing why would you steal from this nice store and all these other things it was just looking at her like we wouldn't steal anything we've never stolen anything a day in our life because what's the point so she goes on to say it's always the black kids y'all are stupid and not you don't think you don't use your brains that god gave you and we're just sitting there and we're getting offended and upset at this point so the worker who was following us walks over and is like, ma'am, calm down, what is your issue? She was like, these kids don't know what to do with their life. They all resort to, uh, she said, ghetto lifestyle and stealing from folks and all that stuff. And the worker basically told her that we weren't stealing. He just needed to monitor, monitor everybody in store, which he was. But she just decided to pick on us because of our skin color, I guess. That made me, I was more mad than sad or upset, maybe. Because it's like, she doesn't even know me and she's already like trying to profile me because of what skin color I am, which makes no sense to me at all. So the first time that I remember encountering racism was about two or three years ago. And I was like, hey man, with three of my friends. Two of them are white girls and one of them is a black guy. Me and the black guy, we put an inappropriate word on the board because we were being childish. And then one of the white girls says, why y'all are acting like monkeys? And me and him leave because we don't want to get into any of that kind of stuff. And when we come back, girl B says, what's going on? And girl A says, they're acting like monkeys. And girl B says, yeah, because they are monkeys. And like that just hurts me because racism is just still alive in this world, even in the children. So the first time I experienced racism would probably be when I was back home um, and it was actually the school I attended before this one it was a predominantly white school. I was one of the three black kids. Uh, Everything was different like every, at the beginning before I like started actually like getting into my work and stuff like it felt like people were treating me like I didn't know anything or like I wouldn't know anything. Like they would go out of their way to explain things to me specifically. Um, whenever I would get good grades, they'd be like, wow, you're so smart. That's so surprising. I'm like, why is that surprising? And they would just go silent. And I'm like. The first time that I experienced racism was when I was in the third grade and a younger white girl in my neighborhood called me a Negro. It made me feel lower than a human being and stuck with me for a very long time, going back and forth in my head. And it really gave me a bad and horrible feeling. The first time I ever experienced racism was when I was in second grade. And uh, my class, we watched uh, Ruby Bridges, the movie about her and what she has to go through. The first time I experienced racism, I felt sad and as if I didn't belong. Um, the first time I encountered racism was, I think in sixth grade, I had been at the YMCA summer camp. Um, I used to have this, this group of people I used to try and hang out with. There was this one kid who used to just get upset at me randomly. Um, one thing he'd say was, I'm going to slap the black off of you if you do that again. Um, I didn't know how to respond to that. So like one day I just wanted to tell my parents about it and they went and dealt with it. But I, I never, I didn't realize what that meant. You know, I didn't realize how bad that was him saying that. But yeah, I guess, I guess some people just are messed up like that, you know? The first time that I encountered racism was when I was at my old school and it was a majority white school and like someone sent somebody a note that was like it had it kind of was a dead threat and I got called to the principal's office. Like they went through my stuff and they found like a drawing that was close. It was it was barely like it was a drawing on the note and it was barely it barely looked like the um the pic like my picture that I drew. So like I almost got in trouble for that. 
and my hairstyles was another thing like whenever I would have braids they would be like oh my gosh I didn't know your hair was so long it always looks so short one day I came in with an afro like because I like to wear my head my hair in a fro sometimes and they lost it like they completely lost it like they were like oh my gosh did you cut your hair you forgot to do your hair this morning why didn't you do your hair this morning and I was like I did I did my hair and they're like that's not done why did your hair do that and I'm like do y'all not know how black hair works but there were a lot of times where it felt like they hadn't seen a black person before and it was so it was so strange to me for my whole life i've always known that i was different and the first time i got um i experienced racism was when i was younger i walked into a store and the security guard was constantly looking at me and no matter where i went i could always see the security guard and he was always looking at me I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home Far across the river, do you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping on I'm gonna stand up, take my people I feel that the phrase, keep on keeping on, is a very powerful statement for African Americans to keep fighting the inju racial injustice in our country and to never let anything hold us back. Seeing all this other stuff coming up, it's just kind of difficult to look at, you know? But you gotta, I guess, pray and keep moving forward because a lot of the stuff is just not gonna change. You gotta hope that they, they realize how messed up it is. Honestly, when it comes to just persevering in the face of all this injustice it really comes down to just praying for the strength to persevere because just saying okay well i'm gonna get up this morning i'm gonna persevere that's not gonna work trust me i'll try it's not gonna work just going out into the world and just thinking that you can just do anything because racism hasn't encountered you specifically is not a good way to go about life like you're gonna experience it at some point and you have to be able to call upon the strength that you're gonna need to persevere. Like after after all that's happening, it's 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 gone past the point where it's just like, well, it's just a small convenience. I'll just keep going with my day. No, at this point, it could get you killed. So it's it's you kind of just have to pray and ask God to give you that strength and to give you that hope and that faith that better things will come and that He will protect you. But yeah, it, you really just have to ask God to help you out because it's not something like, I don't, I don't feel like it's something that you can do completely by yourself. It just doesn't work that way. The way this country is spiraling out of control, it's too much for you to just deal with by yourself. So you're still gonna have to kind of pray that God gives you the strength to make it through the injustices that you're facing as well as the end times because this is probably a sign of the end times. I don't know how, but I feel like it is. Just pray and ask God to help you out, and he will if you are sincere. I will keep on keeping on in a spiritual spiritual perspective by praying for those affected by racism. I plan to keep on keeping on by not simply turning the other cheek, but praying for that person or saying kind words back, even though it can be very hard at times. Like The way that I think like we can stop racism is like, it's because most of the time we're like, all to ourselves like the black community and the white community like most of the time in most situations we're all to ourselves like we're not talking to like each community is not like together like they're not talking to each other a lot. but like 
like I know there are people that are like friends with uh, like friends with white people or like they go to school like they're bros with white people but like we're not really like connected connected like that, that so I feel like we should like get together and stuff and do more things together well one thing that I noticed is that they always kept pushing forward and when I say they I mean the people that came before us like Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, they all kept pushing forward and that's all I can do because what I'm experiencing is nothing compared to what they are, what they experienced when they were alive. So all I can do is push forward and I hope you guys can do that too. So I would say like for people who deals with this stuff, like on a daily basis, no matter where they go, they should really turn to God because you can have that type of um, stuff done to you and still be a happy person only because you have God in your life. And if you get profiled like that, it won't, uh, it'll affect you of course, but you won't get upset and feel some type of way because you have God on your side. Cause praying works and he will do a lot for you. No matter what, I'm gonna keep on, keep on praising the Lord. No matter what, I'm gonna keep on, keep on praising the Lord. No matter what, I'm gonna keep on, keep on praising the Lord. I'm gonna praise until I make it.
I'm going to work until I make it. I'm going to work until I make it. I'm going to sing until I make it. I'm going to sing until I make it. I'm going to praise until I make it. I'm going to praise until I make it. I'm going to praise until I make it. Home Outstanding. I'm so impressed by these young people and the God-given talents, abilities, and gifts that they possess and are using right now for his glory. We definitely want to thank Miss White, who produced this Black History presentation and put this together. So once again, that has been today's AY Snap. I'm Pastor Jason North here at the Oakwood University Church, and this has been AY. God bless you.